Hey guys, what's going on? Daily Tactics here, back with a little bit more of the Men of War Star Wars ASV mod. And today we find ourselves on this volcano planet once again. Last time around we did a uh, video with the Magma Battalion, and today we're going to be continuing the battle on this planet. Uh, so essentially, the war on this planet has resulted in a bit of a trench warfare stalemate, very World War One esque So the clones hold these trenches over over here then there is no man's land straight in the middle and then there is the droid trenches on the other side and neither side has really been able to take the other's trenches until possibly today because Plo Koon has arrived with clone trooper reinforcements from the 501st and uh, he has brought along with him a bunch of these ATRT vehicles and they're gonna be charging over no man's land into the droid area and hopefully taking over their trenches over here the clones do outnumber the droids about 1.5 to 1 however the droids have some stark defenses over here they have a lot of troopers lining these trench walls and then they've also got two vehicles they've got a snail tank right here and then further back they have an AAT tank, and the clones only have ATRTs, which are lighter vehicles, because they're only able to basically maneuver these lighter vehicles through this rocky terrain. They couldn't bring any ATTEs for this type of terrain. Either way, guys, it should be a really interesting video. I'm excited to get it going. Be sure to hit the like button if you haven't already. Let's try and get a thousand likes in the first 24 hours, and uh, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. All right, guys, let's get it going. Hey guys, real quick before this video begins, I want to thank my sponsor, Instant Gaming, for sponsoring this video. Uh, they sell really, really cheap games for almost any console you could think of and PC. Men of War Assault Squad 2, for example, a game I play a lot on the channel, is only $5 compared to its retail price of $30. They achieve this by buying games in bulk during Steam sales and then selling them back uh, to consumers for a cheaper price later on. It is completely legit. I use it to buy all of my games personally, so I would highly recommend it if you're looking to pick something up. They also have a wide variety of Star Wars games, uh, every Star Wars Battlefront you could imagine. Legend, the Force Unleashed games, Knights of the Old Republic, Republic Commandos, all for extremely cheap prices. Even just going in the link in the description below and clicking on the link helps out my channel a ton because it shows that I am referring to people to the website. I would highly recommend considering it if you're looking to make a game purchase in the near future. And thank you so much for you guys for listening to this advertisement. Thank you to Instant Gaming for sponsoring the video and on with the video. Okie dokie then, fellas. We're going to go ahead and press start right now. And uh, the clone trooper should begin going forward here. And actually, fire is immediately starting from these ATRTs. Their weapons do have a lot of distance behind them, so they're able to uh, start firing rather quickly. But the uh, clone infantry isn't really firing too much yet. Oh, over here we actually have a huge battle going on on the far left flank where clone troopers uh, appear to be attacking this small ruined building over here that is occupied by a bunch of battle droids. The battle droids managing to get a good number of kills on the clone troopers, but I think the clone troopers should manage to overwhelm them uh, relatively easily because they do outnumber them on the left plank, flank pretty well in this immediate space. But then further back, they might have a harder time with these uh, battle droids holding the trenches over here. Back to uh, the middle of no man's land over this way. Um, there are a few droids that are in a bit more of forward positions, uh, and they seem to be able to knock out um, the clones that are really yeeting themselves forward very, very early on. But the majority of the clone trooper army is taking a bit more of a backseat approach. They're not really charging too far forward. They're taking it slow and steady. Which is definitely the way I would do things if I were them. Oh, huge charge right now, actually, from these clone troopers. Oh, no. Oh, they're really they're really going in there. They're splitting up, trying to uh, make it to the front lines here, and they are stopping to fire now. And actually, that was not a bad burst forward. I mean, they managed to, to break in through No Man's Land pretty well there, and now they're getting some fire off. I really thought that was just a straight-up suicide charge, but it ended up being okay. Hey, well done, clones. Well done indeed. Oh, a few poor 501st troopers over here on fire, and they burn to death within their armor. That is, like, one of the most horrific ways to possibly go. Very, very sad. Droid poppers going off over here. 
Oh, a big droid popper landed over here and took out all of these droids. There are some magma guards on the field as well, actually, so those are definitely some elite units that the clones are going to have probably a little bit of trouble dealing with. Uh, we've got clones coming up onto this rock outcropping up here and firing out. That's a nice little height position, a little bit of high ground. Uh, and then we've also got clones coming up and over this little destroyed bridge over here. They're not making too much progress over this way, but, you know, it's a good flanking decision. It's a good attempt right there. Um, ATRT is just straight down the middle trying to pour some fire into the droid lines, basically acting as artillery support because they do have the biggest cannons of the clone troopers right now. Um, I wouldn't say they're resulting in getting many kills, but they're, they're doing their best. Actually, the snail tank over here is already dead, so that thing went down mighty early there. Um, but the AAT up here is still alive and is pouring some uh, artillery fire down at the charging clone troopers. Oh, this is so cool. It's kind of like an ant hill, and all the all the clones are the ants trying to take over the um, the opposing ants hill. I don't know. <laughs> Weird analogy, but I don't know. Look at them all crawling around the rocks and stuff like that. It's super funny looking. They are taking a serious beating, but, you know, the clone spirit is not letting up. They are going to continue attacking forward no matter what, and it is beautiful. I was actually inspired to do this video because I uh, recently went to uh, see 1917 with Zelda in theaters, um, which was super, super good. Um, wow, like, probably top top five movies of uh, of 2019 for me, because I'm pretty sure it came out in 2019, right? It didn't come out in 2020, I don't think. Maybe it did. I don't know. It was really, really good, though. I, I enjoyed the story. If you get a chance to go and watch it, I would highly recommend. Um, but sort of that trench warfare aspect of war has always sort of fascinated me um, because of just, like, how it's such a stalemate, and it's, you know, it takes so much guts to run through no man's land, and, you know, in a in a type of a fight where you almost know for a fact you probably won't live to see the end of the day because of just the sheer losses every charge into no man's land costs so it's like a fascinating sort of weird aspect of early modern warfare and uh, you know thank god that that type of warfare didn't continue very very far into the 20th century with world war ii having the blitzkrieg and then um, less static warfare than World War I, um, but I was just like, man, I, I'd love to do another Clone Wars video with sort of trench warfare in No Man's Land, because it's, it's a fascinating thing, and we can see it in effect here, basically, with the clones just taking heavy, heavy losses in No Man's Land and getting sort of stuck out there. You know, they, they made it pretty far, but now they are getting halted, and they're having to take cover beneath these craters rather than um, charging forward because of just the amount of enemy fire that's coming at them. It is truly, truly brutal. Um, but they are, you know, making a little bit of progress here. They are managing to get a good amount of fire out, so this is not a completely static battle quite yet. Um, they, they will maybe actually win this thing. I'm not fully sure. There are still a lot of droids left alive in these trenches um, and still managing to get a lot of fire out at the clone troopers. But the clones do still have, I think, numeric superiority at this point, um, although it might be evening out a little bit. So, I don't know, it's 50-50. The far left flank seems to be doing a lot better than the um, middle is doing. These guys are, are having a, a far easier time. I mean, they have still taken losses, and I don't want to, you know, take away from their heroics that's been going on on the left, but whereas the middle is a complete slaughter, the left, we're still seeing a lot of troopers alive, and actually they're making a little bit of progress here. This one trooper peeping up over the hill manages to get a droid popper off, but he is under intense fire. He does end up dying there, but not before his droid popper does eliminate a droid right there. So well done to that chap right there. Well done indeed. Our ATRTs are essentially all dead right now. Either their drivers has been have been killed, or they're completely burnt. They have been burned, baby. Um, Plo Koon is chilling over here with a group of clone troopers. He's made it to the front lines. He is a general who will fight alongside his men and will not allow them to, you know, simply go out and die. He leads by example, which is definitely the way you want to do it in warfare. You don't want to be an absentee general in the slayers, especially when your men are literally being turned to skeletons. Whoa! Huge explosion hits right there. Um, Plo Koon manages to... To survive it, actually a number of those clones managed to get up after being 
um, you know, struck down by that explosion. It's like a little triage center going on right now. <laughs> Everyone's sort of healing up or, or taking cover in this little nook. <laughs> this lightsaber is just going straight through this one clone trooper's head. Oh, interesting. Uh, maybe it's like, a, you know, he's warming his head. He, he was a little cold underneath the suit, so uh, Plo Koon was like, I got you, dude. Let me just light your head on fire. This is like a whole stack of clones right here. Holy cow, look at all of them. I mean, they're they're inching forward. They're not making big pushes. Oh, here we go. Here is a big push. Now this, this is big right here. And boom, already starts getting hit by intense fire from the droids. At least they've come forward with more men than uh, before, though. And that will help for sure because it, it bulkens their attack a little bit more. That was the whole thing with trench warfare, was trying to outweigh the enemy when you attack. Uh, that way you can take over the static defensive position. And that's why it's so hard, is, you know, gathering all that men was almost impossible to do um, in order to take it. And that's why the front of World War I never really changed that often. Um, you know, there was only a few major battles that resulted in mileage being gained from the trenches um, but other than that it, it was a very static war it almost the front lines almost never changed it would be like maybe a mile or two every every month or so um, not not a big uh, big territorial war at the end of it which is maybe why it's not you know portrayed in video games or cinema all that often is because you know, there's only so much you can do. There's not a lot of travel during it, you know. Um, there wasn't a lot of fluidity in the battlefield itself. Like, strategies were very simplistic because there wasn't that much you could do without, you know, just hitting a hard wall of enemy soldiers. So, that might be why World War II is obviously, like, the more popular war to be portrayed in cinema because of its fluidity and because, um, you know, it was more maneuverable and makes for better stories in the long run, I guess. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. I might just be talking out of my butt right now, but that's okay. Oh my god, every once in a while a clone body explodes because of the gore mod on this thing. Oh my god. The bodies are burning. The guts are burning. Oh, it's gnarly, boys. It is absolutely gnarly. I'm starting to think that the 501st might not have this battle in the bag. There was a time there at the very beginning where I really did think that they were going to like win the day here and they were going to manage to um, take over these trenches, no problem. Oh no, Plo Koon went down up here. Aw, uh, poor buddy. Aw, uh, poor Plo Koon, one of my favorite Jedi. He got stopped in that trench there. Um, but yeah, like I was saying... Now I'm not so sure the clones have the legs to actually do it. They still do have a lot of troopers, you know, geared up over here. Maybe another 100 or 200 left. But um, in totality, against the droids, they're they're just not managing to, to make it through these defenses at all, you know? Especially this AAT being a major problem. That cannon is just managing to, to blow up large numbers of clones. Um every time they try and attack it is it is not going well for all these cloney boys right now it is very very tough and the infantry support behind the tank it's just the perfect storm of clone slaughter right now Ugh. it is tough to watch our boys going down like this oh my god they need to get further under the cannon if they're like right here the cannon literally cannot hit them um, but they're not managing to make it that far in so they're just getting hit harder and harder by that AAT cannon and it is resulting in their deaths big time. Oh, this guy's on fire. Burn, baby. Oh, roasted clone. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> I feel so bad for him. It's literally just burning. Oh, a little bit more fire coming from over here. It looks like maybe a couple of clones are... Yeah, they're peeking up over this mountain trying to get a few shots in on these uh, droid trenches. But they're stopping themselves. I mean, they're not making that much progress anymore on the left flank whereas before I said oh the left flank's doing so well compared to the middle but now the left flank has also sort of ceased its advancements oh it's so sad so the bulk of the clones are right here we've also got like a spread of clones over here a few clones have like fallen into these craters let's get these guys out of the craters also there's a few ATRTs that have like become stuck let's bring them forward yeah these guys are like they fell into the crater and they can't get out now I think how sad. 
I think this one's stuck too. Oh no, that one's okay. All right, well let's let's bring up the rest of the clone forces. There's a few fellas here who are, you know, being a little bit less than brave. Is this one stuck? The ATRTs are certainly derping a little bit, but there we go. We'll, we'll bring all the lads forward so they can, um, you know, participate in the battle a little bit more. The last sort of hoorah of the clone assault and we actually are seeing a few clones moving forward because the ATRT is sort of leading by example right now and uh, you know pushing the clones to be brave and actually step on in there having having a little bit of armor support always sort of leads to bravery in men because you, you feel more like you're in a moving moving fortress I guess you have armor behind your attack and and you're less likely to get hit yourself that sort of a thing you're not the biggest target out there but Sadly, that ATRT did end up going down right there. So that that thing's not going to be much help anymore. Um, we got uh, one 501st trooper taking a moment to heal in the middle of the battlefield. Um, he has done so and now is beginning to move forward once again. He is at the base of where the ATRT was. A few clones actually making it to the edge of the um, the area here. That guy gets actually decapitated, and you can see his brain right there. There's the stem, and there's the the base of the brain. That's so gross. The medulla oblongata. My medulla oblongata. Um, yeah. This is a slaughter, man. This is an absolute slaughter. Uh, I really want to see, like, one good trench charge, though. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to gather the clones, and we're going to actually just, like, yeet them forward into the trenches now. And um, this will be sort of like their ha last hoorah kind of attack. And, um, you know, if they manage to succeed, they manage to succeed. But if they don't, they don't. I mean, things were kind of slowing down in the middle there. And I, I did kind of want to see a good trench charge all night. You know, the boys coming through. So here we go. Last hoorah clone trench charge. They're, they're hopping on in here. There we go. Okay, so they're actually making it in. There is one droid right there. If you guys would just turn and shoot him. Oh, we got a few shots coming into him. There we go. They they scrapped that droid. There we are. The clones are splitting up quite nicely. They're actually getting a little bit of fire out, managing to scrap a couple of droids up here. This one, like, lightning all around him as his circuits malfunction. Um, they're firing up the trenches. They're firing to the left. It's beautiful. But that being said, they are taking some losses themselves. A few clones on fire over here. Oh, my goodness. Look at this chap. Look at this dude. Look at this dude <laughs> with his MITR just spraying out. Oh, it's gorgeous. Oh, oh no. Oh, dear Lord. Oh, it's tough out here. The burning. Yeah. I mean, it's a valiant attempt at, uh, you know, taking the trench. But at the end of the day, what can you do when the droids are just holding so, so fast, you know? Yeah, it was a good battle, I feel like, but I, I think the clones have reached the point where they're just not going to manage to do it, you know? Which is always kind of a shame. Let's go into normal speed now. We were in slow-mo just for that little trench charge there. They are still getting a little bit of fire out, so maybe they'll be, be able to scrap a few more droids, weaken the droid defenses once more. But they themselves are under some heavy fire right now. Oh my god, they keep burning. Oh, and that squish sound of the bodies exploding. Oh, these poor chaps. It's okay, lads. I believe in you. <laughs> More death and mayhem. Now they're sort of squatting down and hiding. Oh, a few more troopers actually making it into the trenches as well. They were a little bit late for the, uh, the charge there, but they're making it up. And the problem is the droids still have all of these troopers up here that have basically not been involved in the battle very much. And all these guys over here. The clones are heavily outnumbered at this point. Ugh, it is tough, man. It is very, very tough. I mean, they're working their hardest. By the way, the ASV mod that I'm using right now actually has um, come together with the, uh, the Galaxy at War mod. Uh, and they've partnered up. So, um, we should be seeing a lot more Galaxy at War assets within the ASV mod, which I think is super exciting in all honesty, um, because it means we're going to be getting these animations and these battlefields 
um, alongside all of the Galaxy at War content that is there. It, I'm sure it'll take a long time for them to integrate it all together and for them to actually form the mod and, and make sure it's all working and all compatible and things like that, but once it does happen, I am ecstatic because it's all I've ever wanted after discovering the ASV mod is, you know, the full effect of Galaxy at War combined with the full effect of ASV mod. So that's going to be really, really exciting when it eventually happens. And it is. It's confirmed. They've partnered with Galaxy at War. So that's pretty exciting stuff in all honesty. A couple of brave clones charging up to the second level of defenses here, but um, they got scrapped pretty fast there. They did get scrapped very fast. I mean, they got obliterated, essentially. That was, uh, that was not, not too grand. Oh, man. I mean, this is really it for the clones. There's like a few scra uh, stragglers back here, but I think they might just be stuck on the battlefield, so they're not able to come forward, actually. Yeah, I mean, there's like light fire, but not a lot is going down. Should we do one last charge up to the second level? Let's let's do another charge up here. Go, lads, go! The battle's sort of winding down. It gets to the point where neither side is really attacking or defending all that much. So um, I prefer to like have a nice last hoorah kind of big bang sort of a thing than that slow, you know, 20 minutes of, of light fire, that sort of a thing. Um, but wow, the the clones are are seriously struggling. <laughs> I feel so bad. It's way more gory than the Galaxy at War mod. So like when a clone dies, you're like, oh god, he is really dead dead, you know? Whereas in Galaxy at War, it's like, okay, you know, he's dead, but you know, I didn't see his entrails exploding out of his brain. Like, you know, it's less, it's less graphic, so, so you feel less bad about a clone dying. But when you see them just straight up getting demolished, it's a little bit more depressing. Those are actually those Magna Guard grenade launchers, those green um, grenades that we're seeing coming in. It's almost like mortar fire or artillery fire hitting the trenches, which is kind of cool, actually. It's very World War One-esque. Um, but they are they are taking out these clones one bit by bit. They are, you know, the clones are getting shell shocked, trying to get up and uh, continue the fight, but but just not managing to. Yeah. That's gonna just about do it for this battle here, lads. Let's let's sound the sound the retreat for the last remaining clone troopers. There's maybe like twenty or so left over. All their attacks sort of failed, and now they're they have to hope to make it back um, without getting shot by the uh, by the droids. <laughs> now I'll show losses for the battlefield, but I think uh, it's gonna be not a good representation so yeah yellow are dead clones red are dead droids there's probably a lot more because bodies explode in this mod and then also vehicles run over um dead clones and droids so this is not an accurate representation but as you can see i mean even by this representation which is inaccurate the the droids killed way more clones than than droids lost and that sort of shows the unevenness of doing an assault into into the trench because if the droids assaulted the clone trenches over here I think we'd be at the same effect I, I think um, they they would have been equally as slaughtered as the clones got slaughtered so it's um, it's really tough if we just zoom in here I mean you can see how you know there's some clone bodies on the field but there's way more helmets than there are bodies alluding to the fact that there was way more troopers here who just got obliterated and, and died and you know it's gruesome this is a gruesome mod. I kind of love it, actually. Like, it's way more fun than sort of the tameness of regular Men of War. It's something new, and I think that's why I like it so much. Maybe the gruesomeness will wear off or something like that in the future, but I think it adds a fun element. Blood for the blood god, am I right, fellas? Um, either way, thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to comment, rate, and subscribe. If you did, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Be sure to click that subscribe button for more content and hit the notification bell if you'd like to be alerted to whenever I live stream or upload. Thanks so much.